My name is Thomas Ormston. I work at the European Space Operations Centre, which is part of the European Space Agency. And my job title is Deputy Spacecraft Operations Manager for Sentinel-1. Yes, the lifestyle that I have with this job uh, is one that I'm very, very happy with. I mean, partly because I'm a big space fan and this job is pretty much, I would do it if they didn't pay me. I probably shouldn't say that, but uh, it's uh, fantastic, yes. And it allows me to also have a good work-life balance and, and everything else, as well as meet interesting and fun people at work. So I got my job through the Young Graduate Trainee Programme that ESA runs. So for all the member states, once you finish university, you can do a one-year placement uh, at one of the ESA sites. Uh, that's what I did. I applied uh, in my final year uh, to come and work actually where I work now at ESOC in Germany, uh, flying Mars Express. And then after the year, uh, I stayed on. I, I liked it so much I, that I decided to stay on. Uh, and I stayed on then as a contractor uh, for ESA and later uh, became ESA staff again. And uh, that's where I'm working now in Earth Observation. Uh, yeah, I would say a typical day is completely untypical uh, for, for us. Uh, that's part of the joy of operations and spacecraft is you never quite know what's going to come from one day to the next. Uh, of course, it usually starts with uh, checking out how healthy are the satellite that we look after is doing. How's it? Uh, what, what, what are the parameters showing us? Is it working how it's meant to be? Do we see any problems on the horizon? Uh, and then sometimes rushing into firefighting and troubleshooting those, or if it's giving us a nice calm day, uh, then looking into working out uh, what it's going to be doing next, uh, planning its coming activities, or also looking at uh, the, the long-term health of the satellite. And uh, is it performing how we expect it to? Is there something that we need to get on top of or start monitoring? Uh, and also sort of worst case scenarios is a lot of what we do. What could go wrong and uh, how would we fix it? Because of course, if we have a plan and a procedure that we've practiced uh, in place, then that makes it a lot easier to fix it if and when one day it actually does break. Uh, the coolest part of the job is definitely sitting down at a console and knowing that you're flying something that's in space, that, that you're the one that's in control of it. Uh, particularly when we do a launch, uh, we're in the big main control room, which looks totally like something out of the movies. And uh, it's always very cool, but slightly scary when you sit in there to know that you're in the hot seat. This this isn't a movie and there's no one coming to save you. You're the one that's actually responsible for making this mission fly. I'm not sure. There's not much I don't like about my job, to be honest. So it would be what I don't like about my job is that even, in, even when you're flying spacecraft, uh, you can't escape the fact that you've still got to write reports and do documentation and things like that. You do actually realize why it saves you sometimes when you look back on it in the future. But uh, when you're having to drag through it, it can be uh, a little bit tough. I'm not sure how the pattern is in Ireland. So for us, we do all subjects in school up until secondary. Um, and then so from then sixth form uh, level. So uh, what's that further education? Um, then I took physics, maths and IT, which actually set me up perfectly for this, because those are some of the subjects that are perfect for space. Although, of course, subjects that are good for space are quite varied. I mean, we have everything from I mean, all the typical STEM subjects are part of what what we do. A lot of people that are into computer science, technology, and things like that. But we have other people. I mean, we have uh, we have doctors, we have interior designers, even for designing things like about the space station. We have a whole political section to deal with, with the complexities of all the different countries working together. So there's a lot of ways into it. For me, yeah, I went through the fairly classical route of uh, further education. I did physics, maths, and uh, and IT, and then at university, I went on to study physics with space engineering. And that then set me up very well for where I am now. Although, of course, flying a spacecraft, what we call space operations, is not something you really learn anywhere. So uh, it's something that you train on the job, but having that background from those subjects, the ideas of thinking critically, working together, discussing ideas, the scientific method, um, a solid background in maths and computers. Uh, all of those things were, I would say, absolutely fundamental in 
making sure I was successful where I ended up. I think it's been, uh, I mean, I can say certainly one rewarding event was when I was working on Mars Express. Uh, so that was Europe's first mission around Mars. And some of the times where you see what the mission is doing and how it affects people is definitely very rewarding. So there uh, I created the Mars webcam project where we've got a little camera on the spacecraft uh, that we we push out the images on Twitter as soon as they're taken uh, and seeing people really engage with those and uh, get into downloading the images and processing them was was great fun. Also on Mars Express, we supported various Mars landings by relaying data, uh, particularly the NASA landings, for example, Curiosity, and sitting in the control room and being on the on the loops while while we worked with our partners in NASA was was really rewarding. But that's also been very true since I've moved now to working on Earth observation spacecraft, where the impact of what we do is much more visible day to day. Sentinel One does a lot of disaster recovery operations. I mean, just this week, we've been doing observations to support flooding, for example, in Russia and things like that. So when you see that you're a small part of the, the huge team that makes it happen, but you're still a small part of actually helping people on Earth by doing something I love, flying satellites, is, uh, is really very rewarding. <laughs> yeah, well, pretty much this is my dream job. Uh, I. I think I'm very lucky. I think I'm lucky to have had a dream job in the first place because I know for a lot of people it's uh, it's sometimes hard to find that. So I think I'm I'm lucky to have found that I have a dream job and to have ended up in it. So yeah, flying satellites would be my dream job. Uh, there's a lot that you can do if you're considering this job or or indeed any job in the space industry. I mean, the first thing to say is that the focus in terms of what skills you need to build up are the typical skills you'd need to build up, I guess, for most jobs. I mean, you need to be good at team working. You need to be good at thinking critically. You need to have common sense. Being able to work with computers is pretty much a must. Uh, having pretty decent math skills, um, science skills, and things like that is also useful. Uh, but beyond that, uh, there's a lot that you can do from fairly early on to get involved in the space world. Uh, certainly for us, if you look at the ESA website, you'll see that there's lots of opportunities in school and particularly when you get to university, there's lots of programs that ESA run where you can get involved, you can come to ESA sites and uh, learn what we do in special training courses, you can take part in ESA programs that will help fund you uh, flying on a zero G aircraft or even uh, putting your projects or your experiments uh, on a sounding rocket, things like that. Uh, so there's lots of ways that you can get involved with ESA from, from fairly early on. And not only does that look great when you finally apply, it's also a lot of fun because you get to meet people from all over Europe that are also super interested in space. So uh, the thing I would say is really keep an eye out there. And it's not just ESA, there's lots of programs uh, to help you get involved in space and STEM subjects in general. And all of those look good and build the skills that, that you need to work in the space industry.